Aha! The third episode of Digital Assets is live. We are progressing and our content is evolving. You're welcome to the Internet Money Podcast, Digital Assets Show, and I am your host, Oluwa Shegun Ori Affair, Hosu Alaji, like my people call me, or Olu. You know, if you've met me on Spaces and Twitter Spaces, you hear Olu. Um, the Digital Assets Show is that show that takes you on a ride, exhilarating ride, like I like to say, of the ever, ever evolving blockchain landscape, fast evolving digital currency landscape. Uh, in the first episode, we spoke about what digital assets are. Second episode, we brought a writer here and he was able to paint a picture of Bitcoin, which is the number one digital asset on top of the food chain on the blockchain, like I like to say. Uh, but today, I have two special experts in their various fields, people that I like to uh, consume their content online. One is a mind coach, uh, a certified line and mindset coach, and a Forbes BLK member, an entrepreneur, a tech founder of Demo Hub. He's also a Bitcoin educator and, of, of course, just came back from the Africa Bitcoin Conference. Please give it up for my guy, Ayobami Atolagbi. Yeah. Hello, guys. Hope you guys are having fun and you're ready to get educated. Uh, I believe it's going to be an awesome one. Thank you very much for th this introduction. I don't need to introduce myself again. Uh, I believe we just ride on the, on the wave of that and I believe you're ready to learn. Thank you so just much. Just hear the big man voice. <laughs> <laughs> You know, the big man voice. Your voice, right? I'm talking about your, your voice, voice, right? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, far to the other end is my guy. He's a Nigerian, but of course doing exploits in the diaspora. Uh, you know, this is somebody that empowers other people, and I respect his work a lot. He's the CEO of Afri Axe. They do a lot of hackathons, and they give a lot of money out there for young people who are talented. Of course, Uchi uh, has a product called Chi Money. Uh, they've been doing a lot of integrations these days and, and they enable cross-border uh, remittances in ways that I'm sure only him can explain to you. Please welcome Uchi Uchi Beck, the founder of Afri Axe and of course the founder CEO of Chi Money, my guy. Thank you so much, Shagun, for having me. It's truly a privilege to be here. Hi, guys. <laughs> really happy to be here. First time on air. So super excited to share some tidbits and just have fun. Wow. Look at the way I'm looking at these two people. These are very wealthy people, but you don't know. Because you guys don't have Cuban chains on your neck. Set eh? up. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Let's go into it. So you're right. welcome to this podcast. Um, the goal behind the podcast is to educate. And I know you guys are educators. Mm -hmm. I'm going to start from your mind co uh, our mind coach here. Okay. Uh, for the purpose of the people that don't know you, I know you. Uh, can you give us a quick rundown of your bio data? All right, thank you very much. As I normally call you, Lami. Yeah. <laughs> right, you say Olu. <laughs> All right, um, in simple terms, my name is Ayobami, and um, I'm a certified life coach and a mindset coach as well. Uh, I'm the founder of Demo Hub, which is an ed tech, and also the, the chancellor of Diam Academy, which certifies me as the, the mindset coach, which is focused on helping people build the right mindset for productivity in all spheres of life, right? Because I just say something, when you know better, you do better. Absolutely. Um, as an educator, uh, I'm the ambassador program manager for No Ones, and uh, I believe we're going to learn more about that as the show goes on. And uh, No Ones is a Bitcoin app, right? Yeah, it's a Bitcoin app. All right. Yeah. Um, is that the platform that's Ray... Ray is a CEO of... Yeah, yeah. I think that... Not think. That, that was what uh, we tried to portray in Accra, Ghana. That was about some few days ago. And uh, we tried to push it out in a grand style. And by the way, I just got to know that Ghana was the first African country to gain independence. And... Oh, yeah. We, we, tried to, we tried to portray that in having to... Uh, but Nigeria is the giant of Africa. <laughs> even, though, even, 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 though, even though, as I'm saying, it's one giant. I feel some type of way, but... <laughs> but we are the giant, right? It's awesome. So, so we tried to put it out there. So, Ghana is, is going to be the headquarter for, for No Ones. Oh, it's nice. already out there. So, I went to like, okay, Ghana got the first independence. Okay, we're going to talk about No Ones. No worries. But, but let me go to Uchi. And you guys will pay for that ad, right? You're going to pay for it. Yo, Ray... <laughs> 
Your mind coach is here and on a live television for the first time Bro, in we'll talk about Nigeria. That. You guys gotta pay. You gotta pay me. Run me my check. Don't worry. I will do the right thing for you guys. All right, All right Uchi. Um, let me tell you one of the reasons why I respect your work. Oh, okay. Um, you know, how did we met, meet? We we met on productivity. Oh. Correct. And ever since you haven't stopped. I walked into that hackathon room and I saw by a hundred young people mm -hmm. writing software codes and I said, wow, this is a revolution. Before we dive into that, your bio data real quick because that's where I'm coming next. Amazing. So um, Uchi, I always like to say Uchi as in Gucci. Oh. <laughs> I love um, that. <laughs> Why are you guys dropping codes? <laughs> I love that. And I'm the founder and CEO of Chimoney. So Chimoney is a global payment platform that makes it possible for anyone to pay anyone in the world using just their phone number or email. So Chimoney is used by Google, Microsoft, and other large enterprises across the world for global remittances. And like you mentioned, Lamy, I'm also the founder of Chimoney, of Africa Hacks, sorry. Yes. So Africa has, has a members across multiple African countries and we help young talent oh. to create innovation, get jobs, connect them to startup building, connect them to funding and things like that. Awesome. You know? So let's let's talk about that. How do you connect what you're doing at Africa Acts with Chi Money? Because I know Chi Money enables digital asset transactions a mm. lot. So do you want to tell us how Chi Money is changing um, digital assets cross-border remittance with digital assets <coughs> in Africa and how are you connecting that with the uh, products or the innovation or the skillmanship that is coming out of AfriAx? Awesome, that's a very good one. Like this, I'm saying this for the first time on air, but Chi Money was actually inspired by Africa Hacks. Ooh. So in 2018, when we did a hackathon, we had participants from across multiple African countries and it was just a pain to pay them, right? As you know, all countries, they have their own currencies, their own banking system, and okay. it's not really interoperable. Yes. So we're like, why don't we build something that connects all payment systems oh. with just email? And that's how Chi Money was inspired. Oh. And how Bitcoin fits into the picture is that we use a crypto digital assets as a way uh, to swap between multiple currencies and make uh, payments very, very seamless. So you can send payments to anyone using just their email. And then on our part, we're able to swap between one currency and allow users to settle uh, their payment in, say, Kenyan shillings, yeah. in Ghanaian cities, awesome. in Naira, and things like that. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. That's are good. you taking the business away from the big banks in Nigeria? Or are you competing? <laughs> are you competing? How do they, do they accept you? How do they see you? Like mm -hmm. the, the financial institutions across Africa. When, yeah, you, when yeah. you tell them, oh, we would like to do, I'm sure you probably will be doing businesses with some of them. 100%, yeah. So we see what we do as complementary to what the existing players and traditional finance have already done uh, because we realize that there's been a lot of work that has gone into creating the banking system of today. And there are so many smart and amazing people that have built what works today. And like you mentioned earlier before the show, regulations, compliance, and things like that are very, very important. important. So they protect yeah. consumers, they protect uh, uh, the system from fraud and things like that. And as stream money, we also want to work with the big players to ensure that uh, we're connecting traditional finance to the new payment system, Bitcoin. Awesome. Bitcoin, the new payment system. You're a mind coach. Um, you used to do <coughs> stuff with Paxful, right? Paxful. Yeah, sure. and, I, I, and just a few seconds ago, even before the show, we're talking about nouns, and now you mentioned nouns. Um, digital assets, Bitcoin, how has it affected Nigerians positively in general, whether the use cases, whether in terms of um, um, remittances, um, whether it is in terms of elevating economic lives, is Bitcoin a scam? Can you please tell us from your own angle? Uh, I'm going to pick it up from, from your experience. Actually. Sure, I'm going to pick it up from from a story, not even my story, my personal experience and very close one. 
about four days ago, four or five days ago. Uh, I was at the African Bitcoin Conference. And, awesome. And uh, a friend linked me up with a friend. I'm going to mention Mary Masson. All right. Shout out to her. And she linked me up to Jason. Oh, I know Mary. All right. <laughs> I know Mary. Yeah. Mary is my friend. Yeah. She, 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 so Mary um, is my friend. Very intelligent young lady. Very. Uh, we did stuff together at Satoshi's Journal. Shout out to Satoshi's Journal. Mm -hmm. um, and and um, those are the type of women I think we need in the ecosystem. But that's a story for another day. Please sure. go ahead. All right. So, so Mary was like, oh, I have a friend coming from, he has been traveling around, but he needs to get access to Nigeria. They have a project coming up in uh, Lagos, Ibadan. And okay, his name is Jason. And Jason reached out to me. Guess what was delaying um, the visa? Mm. Right? And we all know it can be limited at some points. Having to like, oh, you want to go on the internet and just Google what you think should be the normal process. Mm -hmm. Now, I told him the right process to take. And now this is the next thing. He needs to pay. Aha. Uh -huh. He needs That's to pay. Where the problem now, comes from. Now, this is the part. We're not saying that... Bitcoin has gotten to the point whereby you can just say, okay, I'm going to pay with Bitcoin in Nigeria. Not yet. So we still have to like flow with the bank, right? So I told them, okay, do you know what's going to happen? I'm in Nigeria. I'm going to help you. And I'm going to send you my wallet address. This is the process. I, I connected to a friend, which is in the immigration. Okay, what are the process like? What are the things you need? And as transparent as we need to be, right? Every conversation I had with the immigrant, uh, immigration officer, yes. I screenshotted and I sent to him. So like... I'm not keeping him in the in, in the dark, right? So you I transparent like I, the blockchain. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> of course, I needed to be right. So I, okay, I'm not having a back. I'm not having a different conversation. I'm telling yeah. you different. So yeah. this is how my conversation with the guy. So I sent him all the screenshots. I'm like, okay, you need to pay some amount of money, and he made the payment to my wallet. I offered it into my bank account. I made the payment. For How him. did you do that? Because I know in, in Nigeria, the banks. There was a circular some time ago mm -hmm. uh, when the central bank governor yeah, was the kind of the being on the fifth of February that as a Nigerian bank you don't process transactions for crypto. Mm -hmm. I know cryptocurrency is not banned in Nigeria. Correct. It's, it's not banned. It's not banned Pay yeah. attention. Mm -hmm. Is cryptocurrency banned? It's not, no, banned. It's not banned. It's not banned in Nigeria, but yeah. the banks don't are not supposed to be Correct. doing transactions. Yeah. Sure. So how did you do the off ramping from crypto to cash, from Bitcoin to cash? Yeah, that that's the power of P2P, right? Wonderful. That's the power of P2P. And, and P2P is peer to peer. Peer to peer, by the way. Peer to peer, right? And uh, no, okay, it's not it's not a promotion, right? But that's the platform I use. Yeah. So having to use no ones. And uh, it's like even if it's a promotion, <laughs> I, I know how to get my money from you and Ray. <laughs> no worries, no worries. So it's, it's more like people, people are ready, people are ready to, to, to really maximize that process. So I got the payment out, I made the payment for him, and this is a real life use cases, right? Use case, I mean. Mm -hmm. And it, it, I, under a few days, or I think under two days, something has been processing for like a week plus. And under two days, it was it was made swift, and he, he got it. So currently, he's awesome. in Nigeria, travel to Ibadan, having to impact the world. So imagine what that would have limited Nigeria in having. And a lot of people would have started benefiting from his from presence that already. Here. Awesome. So that's it. That's beautiful. That's a wonderful story. And um, this is why we're here. Sure. You know, um, there is no way we would have a ten percent capital gain mm. in our new finance act, right? Signed by President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, mm -hmm. which means that every time you dispose of your Bitcoin and other digital assets, of course, you would have to cut the government from slack. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, um, what should the government do to actually enable this policy to make this policy even more attractive to the builders, the founders, even to individuals? who are doing businesses. And I'm asking you, Uchi. For sure, yeah, thanks for asking that. So there are different strategies that the government can explore to uh, benefit from all of the value that is being unlocked by Bitcoin and, and other digital assets, right? So like you mentioned, the new regulations allows 10% capital gain task. Yeah, and I mean, you're yeah. gonna take 10% from me, but yeah. how do I do transactions mm -hmm. so you can take 10% from me? Yeah, and but we're saying that there's no like regulatory clarity. So instead of people to use the right channel, they are going like through the back door mm -hmm. or doing P2P. P2P is great and amazing, but potentially if there was regulatory clarity, we would see some users use apps that are more like user friendly and uh, existing apps that users already use would potentially integrate Bitcoin. And as, 
as soon as sell their Bitcoin, the government also gains some funds. Especially yeah. now in yeah. the yeah. bullish season. Correct. Yeah. Have, so imagine Correct. the amount of money Nigerian government would mm -hmm. have made yeah. if, for example, when this law was enacted mm -hmm. in September, Bitcoin was probably like less than 30. 32. Yeah, thereabouts. maybe like about 30,000. And Correct. now it's 45,000. What's the price of Bitcoin today? But well, let me announce this. to everybody publicly. <laughs> So you can know that it's not a joke. Today, I sat, uh, today is the 9th of December, 2023, 17 minutes past 6 p.m. Bitcoin price is $44,059 with a market cap of $862 billion, bigger than Nigeria <laughs> Stock Exchange. <laughs> Bigger than the entire oh. stock exchange. What mm. are you buying on the stock exchange mm. if Bitcoin is not there? Mm. Sure, sure. So, yeah, it's a lot of money to be made by, I mean, the government, right? By Facts. providing clear regulations for innovators to build, right? The more clarity we have and the more uh, uh, use cases can be made. And also, uh, some, some governments start, start with like a sandbox. Mm. So, more like a crypto sandbox Absolutely. that allows innovators to start building. Uh, Bitcoin and blockchain and neighborhood projects, awesome. right? So, I think it's an opportunity for us to really increase uh, adoption, yeah, adoption, and sure. also increase uh, revenue, revenue yeah, mm -hmm. for the government. For the awesome, government. absolutely. Sure. I, I, I won't let that question just go um, uh, like that. Mm -hmm. He has answered it beautifully well without asking you, um, as a mind coach, um, how should people see? Bitcoin, now that the government of our nation wants to tax Bitcoin, and it's already in the laws, and if you don't pay, maybe somehow, some way, two, three years from now, you have not been paying, and you have been, you have been doing transactions, and you have been gaining, and something wants to boomerang, maybe the compliance guys, the, mm -hmm. the regulators come around and say, hey, you are owing us three years of 10, 10%. Mm -hmm. They've done transactions like 40 times in these two years. You owe us $75,000. <laughs> Yay! Yeah. Yeah. Now how do I pay that? <laughs> so, well, what should, uh, uh, how should me, an ordinary Nigerian out there see uh, Bitcoin and uh, how should they separate that thought process from Fiat and or fiat, that's the legacy yeah, of legal our tender. country and that of others, that's Naira and the rest of them. How, how should they see it and this policy? Uh, for me, I, I would say we should look into the aspect of now the government is coming in. Initially, it was more like oh, the bank should not uh, be affiliated in some sense. Uh, if it's going to give a better flow of your transaction and you don't have to look behind your head while you sleep or having to like lock your doors with multiple part lock when you sleep and you know that okay i'm trading good like nobody's coming back to knock on my door around 12 a.m and say that they are mm -mm -mm. all right i'm not gonna mention that no, you can mention <laughs> no, 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 it's okay so for me i would say it, it should be a full acceptance first of all it should be a welcome uh welcome proposal uh, but most importantly, it should be in the aspect of as uh, the right infrastructure has been put in place whereby I don't have to be stressed to, to say engage that, in it. To have to, not say I have to go line up somewhere to say that I have to pay my tax. Yeah. Like they should just incorporate something. Most, most importantly, get educated, not from the point of the people trading, but from the point of the government looking at us. Right. Get educated to understand how this thing flows on the back end of blockchain and whereby maybe link me up with my NIN, link me up with my passport, link me up with my ID card. Whereby with my BVN, everything can just move seamlessly. Transaction is people are willing to pay, by the way. Yeah, so Correct, people should yeah. be people should be uh, seeing this government policy of yeah, you pay ten percent when, when you dispose as a plus. As a plus, and, and they should start seeing digital assets as something serious mm -hmm. to to buy. Sure, because right. in our country now, there's crazy inflation, mm -hmm. right? Crazy, uh, and um, you know what are you going to invest your money in? Hmm. Mm -hmm. I want you guys to start thinking about that. We're going on a quick break. When we come back, I have a guest from the diaspora. There's a diaspora guest um, who is a Bitcoin businessman and um, he's doing fantastically well. Uh, he's a Nigerian. Uh, he's currently in the UK. When we come back, I'll introduce him live to you. Uh, we're going to be meeting him virtually. I remain your humble host, Olu Washegun, and this is Digital Assets on Pop Central. Stick with me. Do not go nowhere. We're going to be right back. 
Wonderful. Welcome back. I told you guys I have someone from diaspora, right? These guys, inflation, no, they catch them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, and again, he's, he's into the Bitcoin business. Tolu is the CEO of Vassos Trade. You're welcome to this show, Tolu. How are you, my brother? I'm fine. Good evening. How are you, everyone? Yeah, we're doing well. Everyone is doing well. Um, real quick, Tolu. How is the weather in the UK right now? It is hot here in Nigeria, but we're in the studio. We're enjoying our AC shot. What's the weather like over there? A bit cold, yeah, but it's because I'm inside. So that's why I had to come with a shirt, with a T-shirt. But it's right <laughs> outside. It's all right. It's all right. Good to have you here. Real quick, um, share with us um, your bio data for the people that are just seeing you for the first time. Your name, uh, what you do, real quick. My name is Tolu Williams, and I'm the founder and CEO of Vassal Street. Actually, Vassal Street is a, is a um, P2P exchange platform who deals in buying and selling of cryptocurrencies, any type of cryptocurrency. That's what we, we do. And we've been in existence since 2017. That's like six years ago, and we are still standing strong. Awesome. You. So you guys were able to surmount all the uh, ups and downs of the pandemic, the inflation, the censorship that has come from uh, monetary uh, authorities, uh, and you're still here since 2017. Kudos to you. Yeah, your business must be a multi-million dollar business. Tolu, ah, ah, throw some Bitcoin our way. <laughs> Good to have you here. So um, I want to uh, talk to you quickly. How is the Bitcoin business, the digital asset business, the cryptocurrency business you're doing, how, how lucrative is it? I know I've been through some of the things that you, you're doing online, and I see that USDT and Bitcoin are the most prominent. Why those two coins, and how is the business doing in general? Um, Bitcoin is a very lucrative business, if you really understand it. And currently... The way cryptocurrency in general is, um, people are so much in it right now compared to when we started. We started about six years ago, and there are, there are like few people that are into cryptocurrency. So the business was much more booming then, then compared to right now. But mm. glory be to God, everything is still moving on. And also, the reason why the P2P platform and the reason why we are still standing strong is because we we deal only on p2p it's quite different from um storage of cryptocurrency mm. you understand so Absolutely. when you when you when you have a platform that stores cryptocurrency that is another job entirely <laughs> you understand? Because, yeah okay. you're right you to, yeah. yeah you need to really secure your platform, you need to work more on security than any other thing. You understand? Yes. So that yeah, that is the reason why our own platform is much more easier to to, to operate and is friendly. Beautiful. You Beautiful. It's friendly to operate and that is that's much reason why we are we are still standing strong and we are active in the crypto world. I, and and you can, as you can hear, Uchi and Ayabami, just like you said when you were talking about nodes, peer-to-peer, it's obvious that no organization, no government, no type of censorship can stop the movement of value, especially these cryptographic values mm-hmm. between person to person mm-hmm. it's a different ball game when you custody right then mm-hmm. that's putting so much problem on that's yourself so, okay. yeah. so what should we be doing as builders tolu is a founder of a bitcoin business he said it's lucrative but for six years they've been doing well you are a founder of an enabling platform chi money mm-hmm. that allows uh, digital assets and bitcoin to be used as payments across border mm. you educate people on bitcoin tolu said something that there's a lot of people in the business right 
even though adoption is to me, I think adoption is still in its nascent stage. Sure. Correct. Yeah. Sure. What should Nigerian government be taking seriously now that P2P is really, really, you know, connecting buyers and sellers and it's no longer news that it is effective? What should the government be doing to mitigate risk of scam um, also to ensure that there is a level playing field for the players that are truly into this, such that we don't lose our market, our P2P market, because this P2P are usually done on apps, right? Mm -hmm. From one app to another. It might be different apps, you know? We don't lose our market to foreign businesses knowing what bitcoin and most of these cryptocurrency are how decentralized semi decentralized less um re restriction when they are moving you know so we don't want to be against the government but we want to show them how it's supposed to be so mm -hmm. and and this i'm sure the, the viewers will learn from okay. I, i'll start from you uchi okay yeah for sure so you're the mind coach, so I like to <laughs> let all of us talk before you're your mind coach. <laughs> all right. All right, go ahead, my brother. Yeah, so as we know, P2P is unstoppable. So regardless of what regulations that different governments would eneb enable, it's basically unstoppable, and people will still continue to do peer-to-peer -peer trading of digital assets. Mm -hmm. So it's best for, I mean, the users for the regulators and even the financial institutions to adopt and encourage and support uh, decentralization, crypto, Bitcoin, right? Because it's beneficial for increasing revenue, like we mentioned before. Mm -hmm. Also, it's also good to protect users. And like uh, Lamy mentioned, if we want to own a share of the market, we want to create an enabling environment for builders to create solutions for our people, yeah. right? And by doing this, everyone wins, yes. right? Because P2P would continue. It's unstoppable. Yes. Sure. sure. All right. Uh, Over to you, my brother. I, I'm going to take it from the point of where, where my impact has been so far for the past, let me say, seven years. Mm -hmm. Now... Uh, she talked about the aspect of building infrastructures, making it uh, something the government can use. Uh, I would say beyond building the products, which was a debate a little bit at African Bitcoin Conference, is most importantly to educate. Now, we build all the products that can possibly solve, let's, let's assume Nigeria. Don't even let us go West Africa, it's Nigeria. And these products are good. Yes, I know good products sell itself, yes. but there's some fundamental knowledge that is necessary so that you can understand that this thing is on blockchain technology and the way you interact with it is totally different from the way you interact with the your Naira, Nora, on, Naira and the likes of on it. GT Bank so, <laughs> UBA Access Bank, Zeni uh, Bank and, and that's some of these banks that's, are scared that's of big for you. companies <laughs> no, instead of, okay let me digress a little bit. Uh, when, that, when that law was passed in regards to the bank not being involved in, I wish it was actually, oh, we banks are coming in to get a share or maybe 20%, even say 10% of Nigeria reserve is in Bitcoin. That was about many years ago. Possibly Bitcoin was around $10,000 or $13,000. No, it and went, now, it went to sixty nine thousand dollars. If we had bought, maybe if we had bought months. in our, uh, do you know how much you reserve would have grown? We, we would have paid right? almost all so, our debt. Yeah. So before any other thing, I, I I would say education is key. If the government itself can be educated, first of all, then build products that enable transactions in Nigeria, and um, making sure that infrastructure has been put in place in regards to the ten percent. Uh, capital charge, right? Then everything flows easily. Mm -hmm. Flows easily. Uh, I will always double down on education because when okay, this is the second time I'm using that code. When you know better, you do better, right? Absolutely. So when you when, you, when yeah. you know how to use Bitcoin right, I believe 
you would be the one to like just oh i think this product is necessary at this point mm -hmm. i think this product is necessary at this point uh, can nigerian government wake up one day and say okay tolu this is over to you do you think nigerian government can wake up one day and say we ban bitcoin and then <laughs> everybody that owns bitcoin in nigeria will not have access to bitcoin again is it ever possible I I actually don't think it's it's possible because Bitcoin is decentralized in terms of like no one has the right to regulate it. No, you can regulate it, but no one has the right to control it. You understand? You can't ban it. So many countries in the world has once banned um, cryptocurrency, especially Bitcoin, because Bitcoin is a giant of all cryptocurrency right now 100 <laughs> you can say that again <laughs> yeah bitcoin is the giant of all cryptocurrency <laughs> so you know we've we've had news from china and some other countries back then they they will announce they they want to ban bitcoin mm -hmm. they want to ban cryptocurrency and at the end of the day they will end up changing the story as well mm. but Due to my own analysis, they will ban I, they will ban themselves out of the opportunities Bitcoin provides. <laughs> you understand? So, due to my own analysis, analysis and the way I I view all these things is, they want to announce to people that they want to ban Bitcoin. So all these informations will affect cryptocurrency. You understand? Mm. So when it affects them, they will now buy at the lowest rate <laughs> wow. because of panic. <laughs> FUD. The game so, theory. Mm. They, 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 so they, they, they intentionally create this FOMO, mm. they create the FUD, and then and, they, and once, it, once, once, once the, the price dips, they intentionally quickly go and, you know, yeah. absorb, mm -hmm. they yeah. stack up, right? Yeah. yeah, you understand, because yeah. um, China has announced this thing um, severally, and we yeah. all know that China is, is the giant of all marketplace, mm -hmm. so anytime they announce news like this it affects cryptocurrency but they end up buying more instead of maybe canceling it you understand they buy more and they buy more so people now i i realize that there is no how anybody can ban it mm -hmm. since united states china <laughs> are not able to ban it how come oh, like, I you understand oh so i have and this is what is, is keeping some people enthusiastic. This is what is keeping them going because they know you, no one can ban it. If you ban it in your country, they will, if you want to ban it, then you ban internet. That's just the same thing. All right, you take a round of applause for that. You take a round of applause for that. If you want to ban Bitcoin, you want to ban the internet. It's more like you want to end yourself. You know, you it's, it's, it's so powerful. I hold your thoughts there, Tolu. I'm coming back to you. You have dropped gems. <laughs> Everybody don't drop their own quote. You don't drop your own. I love it. Tolu said if you want to ban Bitcoin, <laughs> it's more like saying you want to ban the internet. Mm -hmm. You want to ban TC, TCPIP. TCIP. I mean, mm -hmm. TCPIP. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Right. Don't, let me this, don't let me skip my head. <laughs> it's funny how you cannot be successful doing that today. Mm -hmm. So let's come down to Nigeria. This is our country. Mm -hmm. Nigeria has tried to ban Twitter, now mm -hmm. X. Mm -hmm. um, the outcome we know was very bad for the government. Mm -hmm. sure. You know, economy dwindled as per the, uh, the um, informal sector that, you know, generates its own revenue from Digital communication, digital Correct. trade. Yeah. So vendors and things like yes, that. Yes, and, and all of that, mm. you know. But they swept the business to a black market and people started using VPN. Mm -hmm. And we did have VPN companies that, that were doing great in Nigeria at the time. I can't mm. even count on one, two that could have benefited from that. Mm. So the Nigerian government ended up driving the business opportunity that they would have created for their own people to foreign companies sure. because so many VPN companies had millions of Nigerians just because they wanted to have access to Twitter sure. and they raised funds and, and decided you know to become better in their own economy mm -hmm. and we lost a lot of money until Nigerian government found their way back on Twitter. Mm -hmm. So <laughs> anybody watching now will say ah they don't ban Bitcoin before they go ban them again. Bitcoin is volatile. Bitcoin is this. What is 
Well, what are those things that people should be looking out for if uh, they want to engage in cryptocurrencies? Um, should people be fearful of it being getting banned one day? Uh, should people um, should people even buy cryptocurrency at all? Is this thing something we're supposed to be discussing on national TV at all? This time around, I will start from you. All right, thank you for that, Lamy. Um, okay, we all were born into the age of internet. I yes. wish, okay, definitely, some viewers. Don't let me be partial. Some viewers watching were born before the age if of internet. If you're a millennial like us, <laughs> like us, <laughs> maybe Gen Zers. <laughs> internet is older than Gen Zers, but baby boomers are mostly older, older than, than internet. Of course, and the right. millennials, of course, internet and us are the same age. So. Mm -hmm. Internet and us is the same age, so there's no way the internet should be too smarter than us. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. We created, we we created it, right? AI, so sure. we should be able to do AI things. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So what I'm trying to say is, internet came to make life better, mm -hmm. unless you want to live in the arcade world. Now, this is it. A time will come that Bitcoin will so be used that you actually say, why didn't I start earlier? Okay? But I'm going to come from this point as well. What I'm going to advise to you if you're watching this and you're listening clearly, watching my, 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 my voice, all right? <laughs> this is it. Don't... Okay, let me share my story so that you can resonate properly. 2015, I got in, and I'm going to mention names because the likes of MMM and MMM World... Please, so mention MMM, they were a scam. <laughs> right? For me, I, when I got introduced to Bitcoin, I saw it as an investment without knowing it was a payment method that they were using so that they can stay anonymous, which is actually a good thing, right, being anonymous. But the education, maybe possibly that is why I focus on education right now, so that people don't make the same mistake I made, mm -hmm. right? So when you're about getting started, first thing is nobody is going to tell you to get started in MMM, sorry, Bitcoin, please. Nobody's going to tell you to get started in Bitcoin and they are going to, they are going to be paying you maybe 3% per day. Then that's, that, then, that's MMM. Then that is, yeah. that, that is an investment. Nobody's going to come to you and say, Come and invest in Bitcoin. You don't invest in Bitcoin. Mm -mm. You don't invest in Bitcoin, right? You buy it. And it's it's it. a currency and own it. It's, it's, a, it's, a, it's an investment that you buy and own. And own. It's not like you're investing in Bitcoin. You, you you're chasing after Bitcoin, actually. Yeah. So you <laughs> own it. So is it that you, you want to choose to buy it and hold, right? Or you want to buy it and trade, do the arbitrage? Uh, or you want to just put it on exchange and trade as well? right so be careful when people come to you and say that oh we have a new shining thing in your face and uh it's going to make you like 10x yeah now the last time i'm going to talk about on, on this is is now if something's going to be a part of you that is going to work long term like they normally say there is nothing good that just come in like that like mm -hmm. just give you 10x or 100x in if just three days good to be true yeah, yeah. yeah. so See it as a currency that is going to be used on a long time. So when you're coming in, don't come in like, ah, I want to come and blow. All right? Mm -hmm. Come in and, oh, I want to use this on a long term thing because it's going to be a currency that's going to be used globally over time. So I'm going to just take a pause on that and allow. So, so let, me, okay. let me also contribute to that. Let me help you drive some of those points home. Okay. I hear you saying that Bitcoin is beyond. Is, is beyond. Um, it's a currency, it's an asset. It's beyond what you should just buy and and don't do your research about. Sure. Because right, it's going sure. to be here for a very long time. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be used for multiple purposes. Sure. And it falls into the asset class of of reserve reserve wealth. Wealth wealth reservation. Wealth mm -hmm. preservation. Co mm -hmm. Correct me if I'm wrong. Now we are building a new government in okay now i'm going to use that word government just to no no just to explain it in details we already have every system working in the likes of medical system, medical industry financial industry educational industry and the likes of it now we're only just touching a little glimpse of what is in the blockchain industry in the aspect of the cryptocurrency mm -hmm. so as it is right now we're just looking into the financial aspect of the blockchain industry whereby we can still apply it in other sectors. Mm -hmm. And the only reason why it's so much in the faces of people right now is because it's the money. We All need right. the money to apply to other sectors. For our sector. country. For our country. <laughs> yeah. People are in poverty. And they need money. It's like, so, so 
when you keep Naira in the bank, your Naira is dipping all the time. All the time. That's why Bitcoin is a solution. Is all over the place. Big people want to buy something that will preserve their wealth. And what and what and what can preserve their wealth when Bitcoin market cap is bigger than that bigger of the stock. stock exchange? Of course. You understand? What are you what are you buying that is already listed on the stock exchange? So w- there's over twenty five percent inflation in our country. Mm-hmm. But then our go- government wants to tax Bitcoin. So uh, a lot of people are worried out there. They don't know what's true. They don't know mm. what's what's not true. And that's why the show is here to educate people. The fact sure. that we're speaking Bitcoin alone shows that there is something legit about this. There is nothing mm-hmm. illegit about this. Even Correct. though the the JP Morgan man mm. went to the US Senate, I don't know if you saw that. I saw that. Too. And went to go and say something very uh, terrible yeah. uh, about himself, not mm-hmm. about mm-hmm. Bitcoin, because what he did was to expose himself and all of the fines that his bank mm-hmm. has gone through. I mean, J.P. Morgan Chase have been the, the, fined the, the same guy. multiple times. Yeah, in correct. The, wait, yeah, mm-hmm. this bank's fraud happened. They mm-hmm. get fined so much. And you say Bitcoin is used for illicit mm-hmm. yeah, stuff. Mm-hmm. Let me tell you something. The blockchain is transparent. The Bitcoin blockchain is transparent. Mm-hmm. It's, it, I think it's pseudonymous. Mm-hmm. I may not be able to see your name, Uchi or mm-hmm. Ayabami, mm-hmm. but I can see your transaction. Sure. Which of the bank can allow us see their transactions today? I doubt. Any of the banks. These are wonderful um, technologies that they have built. Mm-hmm. But can they show us their book? Like, can I just check your app and see the transaction of everybody? Don't even let me see their names. <laughs> let me just see that billions, thousands. <laughs> Millions flew. Too, yeah. Like, can we just see mm. so we can know that this balance you have, you say you have, you have it for real. So I, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll modify the question mm-hmm. and ask you, should people be scared about cryptocurrency? Should we be laying emphasis on this? Should, be, should the government be taxing cryptocurrency? Oh. How, how are we going to take away the risk, the fears? What should we be doing as a nation, as a people now? Yeah, so I'll start by saying that uh, people should not be scared of uh, Bitcoin or other cryptocurrencies, especially if they've done their own research, right? So the transactions are transparent, Mm. and uh, we can see that money is actually flowing in the Bitcoin network, Mm -hmm. right? So what helps, or I guess I can I can share my story how I got into the uh, blockchain space. Please do that. So in <laughs> it was 2015, 2016, and uh, I went to a conference in Toronto, Canada, and a random guy just approached me. I was like, download this wallet. I'm going to send you a few or a fraction of a Bitcoin. And I was like, hmm, is this wow. fraud or what? <laughs> so I downloaded the wallet. It was called Jazz Wallet or something. And then I downloaded it and it sent me uh, a fraction of a Bitcoin. And when I go home, I started reading into like Bitcoin and how it worked. I saw like how it rose from uh, over 2,000 Bitcoin or so being used to buy one pizza to like now that that, that value of that. Yeah, yeah. about, about 10,000. <laughs> yeah, 10,000. Lost, lost a lot yeah. of money. So, and how like the value has grown from basically nothing to over... 50,000, and it keeps growing and growing. And I'm like, okay, this technology here, I'm a, I'm a developer, I'm a tech person. So I looked at the, the white paper, I looked at the nice. code. It's nice. open source. You can see like how everything is implemented. There's nothing hidden about it. Yeah, it's not hidden, right? So you can see like that this, is, this works. The, te- the, technology is work. the technology works, it's solid. So I think everyone should, uh, although this is not investment advice, but uh, people should trust uh, the tech mm. because numbers don't lie. Okay. Mm. Uh, one plus one would always be two anywhere you go in the world, even, yeah. in, even in mass. Yes. Right? So, yeah, we should trust the tech and also we should trust that uh, once we've done our research and also if we're doing like the non custodial or like buying Bitcoin and holding it ourselves without storing it in an exchange, that we're all, always going to hold or on that Bitcoin, yeah. regardless of so what happens, time. right? Regardless of the regulators, regardless of whatever happens, yes. we, we own that. Yes, and, like they say, not yeah. your keys, not your coin. If mm-hmm. you know how to keep your Bitcoin off the exchange, you own it forever. Correct, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. So you own it forever. But when it comes to like the education side of things, when we're talking about adoption, I think there is this concept that, I mean, concept of utility, right? The usefulness of Bitcoin in the real world. 
And I think that for us to get to a point where uh, Bitcoin is fully non-custodial, we have to start somewhere. And that compromises the compromise between full decentralization. I know, and I, I know, I know, I know. You might have like different <laughs> opinions about this, <laughs> but <laughs> and compliance. I yeah, know. yeah. I there's mean. a compromise between like full decentralization and compliance, right? So yeah, it's very important because lots of everyday users they don't want to worry about private keys. Like yes, ooh, they don't know what private keys is. They just want to open an app, log in with their username and password, send a transfer, and that's why. Things like a uh, universal money address, it's like built on, with Bitcoin, it's, it's been launched. So yes. it's an open source way to receive Bitcoin in an address that is similar to an email. Yeah. Yeah. Fully awesome. open source and things like that. So we're going to start like with that compromise of compliance. Well, that's uh, a new product you just mentioned? Yeah, it's a new product. Yeah, it's yeah. open source. It's built by uh, the folks at Block and uh, there's a Nigerian company, part of it also, oh. Bitnob. Okay. So it's like oh, a yeah. Oh, oh, yeah, oh, oh, is owned by uh, Bennett Power. Yeah, yeah. so it's because, oh, really? Yeah, it's a oh, really? Oh, block? Is that block? You're talking about block from uh, Jack yeah. Dorsey? Block? Yeah, so it's like a cons consortium. Oh, yeah. yeah, between uh, Bitnob and some other folks. Uh, nice. Also, the guy that worked at, that worked on uh, uh, Facebook's uh, big is it Bira or Lira stuff? There's a guy oh, that yeah, yeah, I can't remember yeah. his name. Ma something Ma David Marcos. Okay. So he started a new company. And they built something called the Universal Money Address. Oh, oh yeah. Yeah, so you oh, can wow. receive your I'm, Bitcoin today. Oh, right. All right. It's, I'm, it's I'm just check that out. Yeah, it's, it's new, right? That's it's, pretty it's new. It's new. It's pretty new, yeah. Oh, so awesome. This, yeah. Oh, shout yeah. out to Ben Apar and whatever he's doing with beating up. I mm. love that. Yeah. Great. Okay, so um, thank you for that information. Mm. Real quick, we still have Tolu. Tolu, are you still there? Beautiful. Uh, you know, the time flies when you are really enjoying uh, the education of Bitcoin yeah, from intellectuals like this. Tolu, yeah. um, before you go, because we don't have enough time, you're from the diaspora, right? I would like to ask you, uh, what do you think the Nigerian government should do? And how should we, our people, embrace digital assets? What, sh what should the Nigerian government do uh, to embrace digital assets? for economic growth and what should the people also do talking from a nigerian in the diaspora in the uk right now yeah um i think the number one thing and the most important thing you have just about 60 seconds please oh okay the most important thing the government needs to do is to first adopt cryptocurrency you understand if you don't adopt it you can't you can't explain anything to people what you don't what you you don't do there's no how you can tell okay now the way i am if i don't do cryptocurrency how can i explain to people to to come into cryptocurrency so there should be a kind of awareness you understand and like encouragement for people to join um cryptocurrency because there are so many benefits in crypto in, in the crypto world compared to to our traditional um banking system but i don't want to go into that because there are so many differences you understand but Absolutely. the first thing we need to do is the government need to like um inform the people and create awareness about our cryptocurrency you know you, i don't know um it was that like maybe two years ago the government tried to initiate their own um digital money Yes, the work. central bank digital currency. <laughs> Do you want to talk about that? That will take another one hour. Let me hold your thoughts. Oh, okay. Hold your thoughts. Hold your thoughts, Tolu. Don't worry. That, I'm going to bring you back so we can talk about that because that's a long one. That's a competition for crypto. <laughs> that the government thinks they're putting in place. And they did not consult us to tell them the truth. But it's okay. Um, it's, it, it's so sad that time has been fast spent. But I thank you guys for coming. I would like to hear you your last words in a few seconds. We still have about three minutes. Uh, in a few seconds. Um, uh, do you think Nigeria and Africa can have some economic gains? Can there be positive economic impacts from Bitcoin, digital assets, cryptocurrency, from the blockchain technology itself? Real quick, you and then you. 30 seconds. Um, I'll refer back to the story I shared earlier. <clears throat> Imagine being, I being able to help somebody with his processing of visa, which took like two days, and he had to meet me first. What if I was not the middleman, which what blockchain, Bitcoin is about? What does that do? Efficiency in time. 
Yes. Now, what does efficiency in time does? It give back in productivity. Yes. That helps the productivity of the country, the continent. Absolutely. And over time, it builds the continent to become uh, a go-to continent, which we are. We are. But we need to be uh, efficient in some key ways. So I'm very sure it's going, to be an, it's going to enable us to do better. I love that. Let me connect what you said with what Tolu said, right? Tolu said the government should adopt Bitcoin, which means that Bitcoin can even be used to pay tax. That type sure. of tax you want to take. Mm. Last words, Uchi, we got to go. So I'll say Bitcoin is the new oil. So let's treat it as, as uh, let's give it a, as much push and as much support as we're, as we're pushing uh, crude oil today. Awesome. Thank awesome. you very much. You heard that. Bitcoin is the new oil. Let's give it as much push as we're giving anything that can boost our economy. I remain Uluwa Shegun Uriafek Koshimani, and that has been Digital Assets Show for this episode for this week. Catch us same time next week. It's going to be another educational show. I love you all. Thank you, Pop Central. Thank you to my production team. Okay. We're going to be here next week. Don't go nowhere. Do your own research. Do not buy coin. I enter Wahala. <laughs> go research. Oh, don't yeah. say I, told, I didn't tell you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Bye. Bye.